have public comment. Okay, public comment. Do we have any public comment? Are we, I'm sorry, Madam are President, are we skipping D5? No, we, we, we voted to do public comment. Okay. We had Principal Shannon and her people here. Right. Okay. okay, so we have 13 people here for public comment. Okay. And how long, Madam President? Is there a st what, are the stu what are the students here for? It's dry fish. Huh? Public comment. Huh? Public comment. Huh? For, for their public 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 comment. Two minutes. Okay, two minutes. Okay. Come on. Um, so, um, Elisa Batiste, Jeff Rubin, Sharon Johnson, Joanna Pace, and Norma Martinez Rubin. One more time, Elise Batiste, Jeff Rubin, Sharon Johnson, Joanna Pace, and um, Norma Martinez Rubin. If folks would I'm, come up, I'm sorry. If folks would come up to the front chairs, so we know that you're still here, since we're later in the evening, we'd appreciate it. So we know, and we can move one person in after the next. I'm going to let Sharon Johnson start, since she has the overall overview. Okay. My name is Sharon Johnson, as you announced. Uh, my son is a sophomore at El Cerrito High, and he has been a tech, a tech in the uh, El Cerrito High Theater program for the past two years. I'm here tonight to express my um, deep appreciation for the hard work of our theater teacher, Miss Jennifer Dreyfus, our El Cerrito High um, principal, who's still with us tonight after a couple of hours of meeting, and uh, Mr. Luongo, here's here, uh, the generosity of taxpayers in West Contra Costa County and the leadership of our school board members uh, whose efforts built a professional performing arts center at El Cerrito High School. Uh, we have an outstanding theater program. I'd like to ask the theater students to briefly stand who have uh, who are here tonight, if, okay. if you would. Okay. Uh, under the guidance of our theater teacher, our theater manager, Kevin Little, uh, our students are learning how to audition, to perform, to do stagecraft and set building. Some are learning the more technical aspects of lighting and sound for live performances. Based on what my son has learned in the drama classes, um, he has actually been asked to uh, apply for a work permit it, and he is a student tech now when um, outside groups rent the auditorium. So we talked a little bit about career readiness. Um, I actually looked it up, and the entertainment industry in California is the fifth largest employer. Uh, our state's motion picture and video related industries um, uh, contribute upwards of, uh, along with other industries, contribute upwards of $47 billion in revenues annually. So it's not just a, an arts program, it's also a job training program. And I know the students want to talk, so I'm going to keep my uh, remarks very brief. I'm just really very, very grateful to the program. So, thank you. Hi, my name is Joanna Pace. I'm the mother of a sophomore at El Cerrito High School. And uh, we want to compliment, uh, I also want to just thank you, as I said in my letter that I sent you earlier this month. Um, I want to reiterate that Ms. Dreyfus has worked tirelessly to both establish and sustain this program that Sharon's talking about. Um, she, Ms. Dreyfus has partnered with parents, alumni, and local merchants to obtain funding and to raise money for the program. The parent support group, uh, Supporters of the Performing Arts, led by ECHS parent Karen Shebeck, is happy to announce uh, uh, this weekend's production of Little Shop of Horrors. Uh, this is not only the first El Cerrito High musical production in our new theater, it is the first musical at El Cerrito High since 1991. Uh, we, we think... You will be impressed with how hard these students have worked on this production. Tickets are $10 uh, for adults, $5 for students. The show times are Friday at 7.30, Saturday at 7.30, and Sunday at uh, 2 p.m. this weekend. The supporters for the performing arts uh, present you, the board members, with these complimentary tickets, and we look forward to seeing you at the show. And we're hoping this poster may decorate some district office, perhaps facilities people or, or Dr. Harder want to advertise. Okay. I'll take it. Yeah. <laughs> okay, Alyssa Batiste. I'm a parent of a, a sophomore here who's going to be the plant. Um, he's extremely passionate. 
about this performing arts theater. Um, he just got to El Cerrito this year. Um, and like I said, he's going to be a, a major part in this production. And he's very passionate through Miss Dreyfus. Um, but he, he was also concerned because he asked me, he's, he, he learned that she wasn't going to come back. So he's very concerned about the theater and about the department's um, sustain, sustainability if she does not return. So that's why I'm here. I'm here on a personal level for him and for the department because he's so passionate about this and I want him to be able to go on with this for the next three years that he's there. So, why don't one, one of you guys start? But Mr. Rubin is up next. Mm -hmm. Good evening, board. Uh, my name is Jeff Rubin. I'm here representing the Pinole Historical Society. Five years ago, in the summer of 2008, uh, Dr. Harder and uh, Bill Savage, who's uh, no longer with the district, helped save a school bell that has a lot of significance uh, to Pinole. And I know that uh, Madeline and Charles have both seen photos of this school bell. Uh, this bell uh, was housed in a tower of the first Pinole Hercules school built in 1905, torn down in 1968. Several generations of Pinole residents attended the school every three years. They have a reunion and hundreds of people attend this reunion. Francis Ellerhorst, Margaret Collins, and Elizabeth Stewart all taught at that school and all have schools named for them in Pinole. Uh, the bell is badly damaged from sitting outdoors at Pinole Middle School for several decades. Now, uh, I want to stress that the school district owns the bell, not the Pinole Historical Society. Uh, the district has agreed to repair the bell and, uh, and we hope uh, someday display it somewhere in Pinole, uh, perhaps at Collins School or uh, perhaps at the new Pinole Valley High School. I met with Associate Superintendent Bill Fay on November 7th to discuss the steps taken to repair the bell. That was four and a half months ago. I've left several phone and email messages for Mr. Fay since then, and none have been returned. So I came here tonight to ask the school board to please find out the status of the school bell's repair because it's very important to the citizens of Pinole. So I don't get. Do we know, Dr. Harder? I don't know the status currently, no. Well, I'll find out. We'll find out. Thank we'll find you. Out. Norma Martinez Rubin. Good evening, members of the board, Dr. Harder, staff, and community. There's an eager group of community residents, elementary school alumnus, alumni, staff, and residents at Shannon Elementary, eager to have that construction and planning of that construction of the new school begin as soon as possible. We're thankful to the voters for having agreed to pass bonds to allow that construction to happen. We're also very eager to uh, have the architects that I believe are to be identified or somehow uh, process needs to occur via the uh, school uh, district so the architects present to Shannon what their plans are. However, one of the ongoing requests of boards as yourself and city councils and other governing bodies is to involve community and engage community for the purpose of community input. We are ready. We're providing that. So what I am requesting the school board to to pay, please pay attention to is to whatever process exists uh, to have the um, architects or other paid staff and vendors and contractors come to Shannon to provide their plans for us to be in tandem with them for the residents and the volunteer community members who are interested in providing their input to be offered or presented the schedule that needs to occur so that there is coordination rather than delays in the process. Thank you. 
I, do I have 30 seconds remaining? Okay, and so I'll use those 30 seconds to encourage other residents in Pinol to participate because I had the privilege, via, uh, per the invitation of Principal uh, Elaine Brady, to take part in providing that input. I'm only one resident of many in the area, and that Shannon Elementary deserves more input so that there is reflection, uh, eventual reflection of the community's character in the construction of the school. Thank you. Erica Wall. Erica Wall. Hello, my name is Erica and I'm a sophomore at El Cerrito High and I'm speaking on behalf of the theater and English teacher Ms. Dreyfus at El Cerrito. I've been performing since I was eight or nine years old and I came into high school knowing that I wanted to take advantage of the theater program that my school had to offer. I walked in with an open mind and ready to do my best. When I walked into the class, I had no idea that I would be greeted by such an amazing woman who is Ms. Dreyfus. We hit it off from the start in my theater one class and we had grown so close over such a short amount of time. We even spent time together over the summer. Starting my sophomore year, advanced theater was introduced at El Cerrito. Of course, I jumped at this opportunity. I was excited to spend more time with my absolute amazing, most favorite teacher. However, not only was I excited, but as well as many other students, not limited to the 10 that are with me today. Ms. Dreyfus is admired by her open doors and ability to speak and open up with. In other words, there are many students who would rather speak with her other than their own parents. Ms. D means so much to me and countless others that if she were to leave next year, a large amount of my classmates would be left with no one to turn to. We are not a class, we are a family, along with everyone else who is a student of hers and lo who loves her just as much as we do. We often take for granted the very people who most deserve our gratitude. Not only does she teach, she inspires. She inspires us to be the best that we can be. Thank you. Jocelyn Strauss. <clears throat> Hi, my name is Jocelyn Strauss. I'm a senior at El Cerrito High School. My first two years at El Cerrito, I was jumping between activities and in everything that I was doing, but in my junior year, I found Ms. Dreyfus in the theater program. I had no idea that theater would become such an important part of my life. Not only is Ms. Dreyfus able to create a great theater class and put on fantastic productions, she's also created a family. I consider Miss D my school mother. I know that I know I can trust her with anything and she has supported me through my personal and academic life. She's created a safe place within the theater for any of her students or anyone else at the school to come and talk to her about any problems that they have in their life. Theater is the best part of my day, and if she leaves, the theater program won't be the same. I will always have Miss D, and I know I'll always be in contact with her for the rest of my life, but the rest of the student body is going to lose this opportunity if she does not continue to be there. I will be deeply saddened that the El Cerrito students don't have Miss D to depend on. Ms. D is irreplaceable, not only as a teacher and director, but as a mentor and a friend. Those of you, the students that you see here are only some of Ms. D's children, and we would do anything to keep our mother. Please come to our show and find out all the hard work that we've put in to create a wonderful program. Thank you for your time. Brandon Market. So I'll call the next couple of names. Brandon, um, Brandon Markhart, Markhart, Max Hauser, Elaine Brady, Heather Hernandez, Cecilia DeCesano, and Mike Peretz. Hi, um, I'm Brandon. Uh, this is my second year in the theater program with Ms. Dreyfus. Ms. Dreyfus is an amazing woman. I can't even like explain it in words because she's more than just a teacher. She's family. She's a mom to like all of us and we are a huge family. She inspires all of us to do our hardest 
every time we walk on that stage, whether it's just a practice or some funny, silly joke we do to get ready to warm up. She is my safe place. Whenever I have any, I don't have places to go, I always can go to her because I know she's there. All of us are like so happy to have her because she's always there for all of us no matter what. And she has inspired me to reach for my dream to become an actor or go to acting school in New York. And she inspired me and I can't explain how much that means to all of us. And for her to be gone next year, it's like, it's really hard because I was really hoping to be, to have her there for the next two years that I have at El Cerrito High because she's the only place, I'm, she's the reason why I wake up every morning and I'm never, ever, if I'm ever in a bad mood, having her and going into her class, my mood is completely lightened up because she's always in the class with a smile on her face, whether she is down or not okay, she always makes you smile. And I, I thank her and I thank all of us that are here today to support and keep her here. So thank you for listening. Max Hauser. <clears throat> My name is Maxwell Hauser. I'm a junior at El Cerdo High School. And I transferred here from Berkeley High School this year because I lost my district transfer due to absences, truancy letters, and bad grades. And I came from CAS. I don't know if you guys know how Berkeley High works, but it's separated into different small schools. And CAS is Communication Arts and Sciences. And we're like the closest. I was closer to them than anybody I'd ever been with before. And so it was really hard coming here and not knowing anybody. But Ms. Dreyfus's class filled the void I had lost when leaving CAS. Uh, Miss Dreyfus, or as I like to call her, my drama mama, taught me more than just acting. She taught me confidence in everything I do, in my personal self, in um, acting, in performing, in uh, school. I can now sing in front of a room of people, and that's really hard to do. And I also have straight A's and perfect attendance, which is not as hard, but it's still pretty hard. I'm sure most of you have had a, te a favorite teacher, a teacher that really affected your lives and changed them for the better. Misty is that teacher for me and all of us, and I hope you can give me and lots of other students in the future the pleasure of being taught by Ms. Dreyfus, an amazing teacher in person. Please come see Little Shop of Horrors this weekend and witness the amazing things Misty has done with our class. Thank you. Elaine Brady. Good evening, uh, Madam President, uh, Dr. Harder, uh, district administrators, the school board administrators, um, and school board members. I'm a, the principal of Shannon Elementary School, and I'm here before you tonight to let you know that the Shannon community in the city of Pinole is ready to proceed with the selection of an architect to build our new school. I have recruited teachers, current parents, former students, former parents, uh, retired parents, neighborhood people. In addition, I have spoken and recruited members from the Pinole City Council, the Pinole Planning Commission, the Pinole Community Services, and also recruited from the Pinole Historical Society. Some of those people are here tonight um, with me to support me. Um, all of these stakeholders are excited to begin the process of building a new school at Shannon. We have had planning meetings and have a clear vision of what we want for Shannon. I met with one of the architectural firms a few weeks ago. Today, I received phone calls from two of the other architectural firms and will be meeting with them on Monday and Tuesday of next week. Good news. Um, we look forward to the swift building of the new school for the community of Shannon in Pinole. Enrollment is going up. I will be adding one new teacher this year. With your support, thank you, that's my, uh, with the support and the support of the Shannon community, we can make Shannon the shining star of the district. Thank you. Heather Hernandez. 
Good evening. I'm Heather Hernandez, a parent of a child at Shannon Elementary. Um, I'm here tonight to ask the members of the board to not let anything beyond your control to stop or halt the rebuilding of Shannon Elementary. Shannon, as we all know, has overcome many adversities. Shannon's building committee is ready to go. We need the board and architects to do their part in expediting the process. Being that our school was going to be closed, we've had to really revive our school. And it is still a work in progress. The rebuilding of Shannon and how it's handled will be remembered and talked about throughout our community for a long time to come. We are so behind on things. Um, a school needs to help our up and coming generation to succeed and compete that we're in the process of turning a room into a computer lab. Our poor kids are in you know, the year 2013 and we don't have a computer lab for them to go on and you know, expand their knowledge and skills. So I'm here to say, help Shannon undergo its makeover from a neglected school to a shining star in the district. Thank you. Cecilia DeStefano. Mike Perez. That concludes public comment. Yeah, I, I had a, something to, to say. Yeah, thank you. Um, Dr. Harder, because I've been involved and I want to, and I want to thank the uh, Shannon community for coming out. I don't want what happened just because there was a slowdown or a mix up at Cameron that shouldn't it shouldn't affect what Shannon and the community was doing to build confidence in Pinole because we didn't stop what happened at Olinda and we didn't stop in El this Elsa Brandy Valley and we didn't stop what happened at Lake School. And so I'm just asking that their process that they had set up and I saw the email from one of our staff members shutting it down. I didn't know why. And I think that it's inappropriate in that we should at least direct because you know, part of the, the voters build confidence in us by going through this process, and we announced it. They had set it up. The architects were all pre-qualified. They're ready to go. There were three firms, HY Architects, who's actually doing Portla, which we're bidding out tomorrow. You have Kotaki Kwok, which is doing projects, and we have Jose Villar, who's doing a lot of our projects as well in the district. So they know the district. They know the people. This this whole issue about need, I mean, they're, they're all known. It's this whole issue about needs assessment and doing that I think has no bearing on the fact that they had set out a process that was engaging and convincing and was going to build the council and everybody into the process so all I'm asking is to let them do what they had done and not hold them hostage to some other process that you know unfortunately the principal got um, sick at, at Cameron so it's no fault of Cameron and things God's side. We don't have that situation at Shannon. The same principles there. It's consistent. It's fair. It's objective. We made it through with Miss Longway at uh, at uh, Alinda and Ajay, Ajay, right? Ajay, Alinda. I can never remember. And um, uh, uh, Miss Sergers, thank you for the correction. At um, so let them, let them, let them engage. Let them be panol, and let them really get excited about something and have confidence in the school. But the emails I get is they say they feel that staff shuts them down and they lose confidence in the board and it makes it that much harder to support the initiatives when we come back asking for their support. We need to make sure they have confidence so they say yes to measure whatever for the parcel tax or yes to whatever the next bond measure may be. So I'm just hoping tonight we can, at least through you or somebody, uh, Mr. Abdallah, tell them they can go forward and finish up and they don't have to wait till April and May to get going on their process. Thank you, Mr. Ramsey. And I've given that direction. And as you heard from Ms. Brady today, she got calls from two architects and she has meetings set up for Monday and Tuesday. Okay, well, can I hear what's going to happen? Because I thank you for that. But So what's the next step? Or Ms. Mr. Abdallah can tell me because, you know, I work really hard on the whole bond program and I just want to make sure that I'm, I'm sad that I got to miss the Portland opening. What but a I'll, shame. I'll be. 
I'll go for it. <laughs> it's at 2 o'clock. <laughs> it's going to be packed. Yeah, so what's the process for, for, uh, uh, for Shannon? Good evening, uh, Madam uh, President, uh, Mr. Ramsey, Dr. Harder, uh, member of the board and cabinet. Uh, Mr. Ramsey, Dr. Harder have directed us uh, to proceed uh, on, on a fast track with Shannon, which that was the results today that we have contacted the two architects. They've already set meetings to meet with the principals. We already set the parameter of what that meeting should be and how long should it be for. We are also in the process of setting up a community meeting with the community after they come back from spring break. And uh, the process moving forward, Dr. Hardo was very clear, and uh, we were moved by his, by his direction. Okay, thank you. Does the board support that? Okay, good. So you're hearing it. Board supports it. Staff supports it. Good luck. I like what I saw. I thought that was you had the most engaging, interesting process of all the groups that was working and was building the council in, the community in, the site in, the parents in. So I just want to wish you good luck, and I'm glad maybe I could have a little part in it, seeing that this process got started again, and uh, look forward to it. Because actually, I try to go visit. I was there at Olinda, and I was there at Lake. So me and Ms. Cronenberg was at Lake. So we'll try to come in. But there is, Ms. Brady, there is a, a community meeting where they're going to be able to participate. I need you to come to the mic because I know that there was going to be a pre-meeting and a regular meeting or yeah. something. Uh-huh. So on Monday, I'm meeting with one, and on Tuesday, I'm meeting with the other architect. They wanted to meet me and walk through the school and, and talk to me a little bit about, you know, my plans and my vision. But I've already, we've met two times already with my planning committee uh, members. That includes, you know, huge cross-section of Pinole parents and community members. So um, after after that, then they said after the break, we would set up a meeting to um, the architects to actually come to our school and meet with our planning committee members. All so, right, because I thought the planning committee meters wanted to give them their input, then yes. they would come back. I just, is that step still involved? That step is still in okay, place. Now and I have they're, some yeah, they're going to come and um, listen to us after. Yes. Okay, so we'll bring you guys to the May facility subcommittee then for approval. Yes. Okay, yeah. great. Uh -huh. All right, all right. Sounds thank good. you. Uh -huh. All right, back on track. I was very surprised today with all these phone calls, but it, was, it was very nice. Your, <laughs> thank email, you. your email, people do read and listen, and we represent and work for you. So we're here, the community, we're the board members, but we work for the community. And so I was pleased with all the support. And please tell your parents and your constituents in the community that the board listens and so you can say hey they listen they're acting we have confidence in them go ahead you, you had one final comment mr are you going to be involved in the process how are you what's your involvement I'm always involved, Mr. Ramsey, and, uh, but, but the heavy lifting is done by uh, the Director of Facilities and Construction, Mr. Holtzlander, but I'm always involved. Okay, so Keith will be involved with the process? Absolutely. Okay, thank you. Sure. Yeah. Um, 